today, I'm going to promise you that you're going to hear one of the shortest sermons I've ever given today. <laughs> promise. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Today's gospel text is a parable. It's a story told by Jesus uh, in the context of Pharisees, the religious rulers, the religious uh, leaders of the Israelites at the time. A parable is not guaranteed that it was something that actually happened. It was a story that Jesus told to help get a point across between two different understandings. Stories are a great way to teach. As a matter of fact, through the generations, over the centuries, it is through stories that we have learned about our culture, that we've learned about history, and keeping in mind back in these days, there weren't books, there weren't libraries, and people had to use, there, there was no internet, people had to use their mind. And so, it was very easy for people to memorize stories that they had been told for years as they were growing up and to continue these stories pressing forward. Jesus and many of the other teachers used memory to tell stories that were scripture in their day. And lessons were learned through those stories. And today we hear the story of this vineyard owner who built a vineyard and everything that was necessary to farm it and then leased it out. Keeping in mind, we don't know if this actually happened or not. It was a story to get a point across. And that story is one that talks about God. God as the vineyard owner who created all things on this earth and gave it to humans to till the ground, to care for plants, to care for animals, to care for one another. It was a setting in which God talks about sending prophets and sending scribes and sending other leaders to the people to ask people to stay focused on him, to worship him, to praise him. And the people rejected the prophets, just as in the parable they rejected the slaves. And they rejected the scribes, just as the second set of slaves were rejected. And then the landowner sent his own son, just as God did to us. And that son was also rejected. And so this parable is told in contemporary times, at that time, a story to help get a theme that people had never experienced, that they could not possibly understand on their own, talking word for word. That story was used to try to get this theme across to contemporary times, just as we tell stories today to try to get points across. The story talks about these tenants. These tenants who are renting from the owner. Humans who have been placed in God's creation. And tenants who have taken on the perception that this area, this farm, this vineyard that they are renting is theirs. This world, which is God's, that we have been called to till, to care for, and to steward, in most of our minds, we perceive it to be ours. And we treat it as ours, rather than treating it as God's. And so, when it comes time to pay the rent, at the time of harvest, the landowner sends his slaves and the renters decide they don't want to pay the rent. They don't want to give the landowner what is his. They want it for themselves. And so they bully the slaves. Matter of fact, it even says they kill 
one of the slaves. And so additional slaves are sent. In the New Testament, you will hear Jesus talk about how the people killed the prophets and the scribes and those who were sent to the people to turn people towards God. They rejected them all, including the Son. And so today, today we stop pointing fingers at the other people who are bullies. We stop always thinking that it's the other person that's doing wrong and we are put in the position to face our own sinfulness. That we too are the tenants in this parable. We too have attempted to take ownership of God's creation. We put invisible lines on the globe and call them national borders. And if you're on one side of the line, it's mine. And if it's the other side of the line, it's not. And if you're on the other side of the border, you're less worthy than me. We're bullies. If you worship in a different way that I do, it's wrong. If you come from a different culture, if your skin is of a different color, you're less anointed than I am. We're all bullies. And yet, the landowner, God, continues to send people to the tenants, even to the point of sending his own son. He doesn't stop coming after the tenants. He doesn't stop coming after us. We will never, ever do things the way we're supposed to. Paul in Romans talks about the things I want to do I cannot and the things that I know I shouldn't do I do. It's part of human sin. And thank God for that son that was sent to us who paid the price for us who simply says, acknowledge me, trust me. Even when you want to take ownership of this stuff, keep in mind, it's not yours. You didn't earn it on your own without the blessings that I gave you, God is saying. Continue to ask me for wisdom, continue to seek my will. Jesus repeats in the Gospels time after time, do not fear. Fear is not found in love or in compassion to one another. Love and forgiveness are the anti-fears. Jesus didn't bull bully anyone. He didn't force anyone saying, believe in me or else. He simply loved and forgave. He walked the talk. And in our baptism, God has claimed us as his own, just as he did with Christ in the River Jordan. Jesus loves you, and Jesus forgives you. And he asks that you too, you and me both, Love and forgive others just as he has done for us. Amen.